Often when I talked about setting stocking rate, I want to emphasize that it is the amount of animals that a person, a land manager, puts on the land at any time. And when I've talked about in the past, I've used complicated terms like animal unit month and animal unit equivalent, and I want to update that a little bit with this presentation. We've been talking about a few terms, and so now we're going to define those. Um, one was an animal unit. So an animal unit um, is an idea that uh, that animals could be uh, just thought of as just 1,000 pound units. This came about when the Forest Service first started permitting grazing at the early part of the 19th century. There weren't very many scales around, so it was difficult to weigh every animal that was put on the range, but they could count them. And so, most cows were about a thousand pounds, even though some were a little higher and some were less. They just said, if we count every more animal out there and call them an animal unit, that that's what the what you know what we try to do. So, uh, for a thousand pound animal, uh, one cow a thousand pounds would be equal one animal unit. For horses, um, a horse would be uh, less. It would take uh, less than a horse to create an animal unit. So horses eat more than cows. So it takes a little more than half of a horse to make an animal unit. Um, steers eat less than a, a mature cow, so it takes a few more steers to make an animal unit, 1.3. Sheep eat, uh, they weigh about uh, one-fifth of a cow, so they eat about one-fifth of a cow, so it takes five sheep to make one animal unit. You can do this for almost any animal on the range, including jackrabbits, and uh, someone published at one time that it would take 50 jackrabbits to make an animal unit. It's also cool to think of this sort of in the in, in the other way, which we call an animal unit equivalent, and this is a factor that reflects the number of animal units in the average animal. So again, a thousand pound cow would be one animal unit. A horse would be 1.8 animal units. A yearling steer would be a fraction of an animal unit, maybe 7.75. Uh, a sheep would be 0.2 of an animal unit and a jackrabbit would be 0.02. So you kind of look at it both ways, but you get the idea. And not to beat this concept to death, but uh, this this idea of an animal unit and animal unit equivalence is it's been around for a long time and it's been applied to a lot of different animals. Certainly cows, but uh, cows that are dry, bulls, lambs, sheep, goats, kids, even wildlife, deer, elk, antelope, bison. Uh, people that are invested in trying to think of this animal unit concept have really taken it to a higher level. Okay, so you can see that that system could work, but it's a little complicated. Why remember all this information about what's equivalent to an animal unit? You can measure animals, you can weigh them, you can know how much they eat. So that's the old way of determining things. I'm going to talk about a new way to do it. So let's simplify the matter. Assume that you could weigh what an animal weighs. We know that large animals eat less than small animals. So older large animals eat less than younger smaller animals. But here's how that would work in calculations. If you had a really large ruminant, 1,000 pounds or more, they eat about 2.5% of their body weight each day. Of course, that varies over the year depending on their activity and the weather. But just if you had to take an average, just a wild guess, it would be 2.5% of their body weight. Okay, medium-sized animals, for a lot of reasons, eat more per day than large animals. So a medium-sized ruminant, ruminant, say a, a beef steer or heifer or an elk cow, something is a little smaller, deer, weighing 500 to 1,000 pounds, they would eat 3% uh, of their body weight. And if you get even smaller ruminants, like sheep, goats, deer, bighorn sheep, ones that weigh 100 to 500 pounds, they eat even more as a percentage of body weight. They would eat 3.5% of their body weight. So those are the numbers that I think are worth remembering. 2.5 for an animal that's 1,000 pounds or more, that they eat 2.5% of their body weight. For a medium-sized animal, that 500 to 1,000 pound animal eats 3% of their body weight. Smaller animals, 100 to 500 pound ruminants, eat 3.5% of their body weight. So from the discussion on in the nutrition lecture, we learned that hindgut fermenters have an ability to eat a lot more food. They, they actually can pass lower quality food through their system, and that means they eat more. They just kind of take the best. They harvest the best of the nutrients, and they pass the rest out. So horses, donkeys, burros, rabbits, other small ruminants or small rodents, etc. They are hindgut fermenters. They eat more than a, a ruminant of their same size. So in order to calculate how much uh, one of these hindgut fermenters might eat, they eat 25% more than the equivalently sized ruminant. So smaller um, non-ruminants eat more than large non-ruminants. So calculate what an, a ruminant
ruminant would eat and then multiply it by 1.25 because they eat 25% more. So bottom line, I think the concept of stocking rates is super important and the idea is that different types of animals eat different amounts, but I think it's better to think about what the weight of animals are and how much they would eat each day based on their weight rather than going down the alley of animal units and animal unit equivalents. So I think animal unit month is an important concept, animal unit is a concept, but let's go ahead and calculate intake based on animal weight.